سنیے ترت تول آکاس دا ورڈ ترت مینس ترتی دا ورلڈ دی ارتھ تول از وی کور اٹ بفور از تول وچ از دس میتھیکل بل وچ از سیڈ ٹو ہولڈ دی ارتھ آن ون آف اٹس ہونس اینڈ وین اٹ گیٹس ٹائرڈ اٹ موویز دی ارتھ فرام ون ہون ٹو دی ادر دیٹ از دا the mythical bull that is keeping the earth up in the air. Suniya Tarat Taval Akas and it's standing in the sky and it's doing this. <coughs> When we talked about the four jugs, Je Jug Chare Arja, we said that in Sat Jug, it is said that this bull is standing on four legs. Then Treta, three legs. Dvapar, two legs. And in Kaljuk, it's only got one leg left to stand on. That the whole earth is now struggling to be in balance. But Guruji isn't supporting this idea that there is a bull that is holding up the Tarti, holding up the earth. What Guruji is saying is when you go into your listening, you will know the real thing that is holding up this earth. When you feel it within you, then you will know what is this thing that is keeping everything afloat? What is it that is keeping the whole system going? The one that is really holding up the earth in the sky and the one that holds all the planets across all the skies. Sonia Tarat Taval Akas By listening to Gurmukh, the Guru's instruction, by listening to that instruction and feeling your Nadang, Gurmukh Nadang, when you know your Nad, you will know the Nad of everything else. That's what this is saying. Sunya Tarat Taval Akas. You will know what is holding the whole planet, the earth, the solar system, the galaxies, what is holding it in place. Sunya Deep Lo Patal. How is the universe structured? And according to their system, they have divided up at least the earth into deep lo patal. Deep is talking about land masses. They define a land mass. One deep is a land mass surrounded by water. We would call that an island or a large continent surrounded by water. According to their system, there are seven deeps, seven land masses. And then law, law means lok. According to them, there are seven lok as well. And the loks are like the higher world, the worlds just above the earth. Seven realms above the earth. Seven higher worlds. Patal are the lower realms, the ones below the earth, the level that we live on. And there are seven patal as well. And each one has a name and each one has some characteristics of its own. So Guruji is saying, if you believe in those things, by listening, you will have a better understanding of what is really the cosmology. What is really the way the universe works? And this might sound really fanciful. How can we know? How can we know what the universe is made up of? Bhagat Pipaji says that when you know yourself, you'll know the entire universe. Bhagat Pipa Ji says, Jo Brahmande Soi Pinde. That which is in the universe is inside you. Everything that is in the universe is inside you. Jo Brahmande Soi Pinde. Jo Khoja Sopave. Who searches for it will find it. It's written in Guru Granth Sahib Ji. Sunya Deep Lo Pata. By listening, one understands how these things work. 
then Guruji, from going up in all of these heavens and skies, Guruji brings it back to you. And this is the beauty of Guru Nanak Dev Ji's Bani. Guruji in the next line says, Sunya poe na sakke kaal. Sunya poe na sakke kaal. Pohe na sakke means cannot touch you, cannot harm you. Kaal means death. By listening, those who have reached this level, death cannot touch them. Why does death not touch them? <coughs> does it mean they do not die? It means they've found something within them that does not die. And when they identify with that, everything that dies doesn't touch that thing. Atma, let's call it Atma. When you find Atma, and when you know that I am Atma, I am not body, I am not mind, I am not these thoughts, I am not my family, I am not my friends, I am not my attachments. We go back to this analogy again every time, the brick wall that we've talked about again and again, this fortress that you've built around you. When you realize that none of this stuff is you, this body isn't me, this mind isn't me, the jyot inside is me, and that jyot has no voice, it has no conversation, it has no desires. Thapya na jai, kita na hoe. It is not created, nothing is done to it. Ape ap niranjan soi. It sits there, present, without any desires, niranjan, without maya, beyond maya. This is maya, body is maya, mind is maya. That which you're looking for is that inside you which is beyond maya. Death can take everything from you, but it can't take atma. Because atma is the one thing that you didn't bring along. Atma was there. When you were born, your atma wasn't born. Your atma is on loan to this body. When the body dies... When the mind, the attachments, that dies, Atma doesn't die. That just goes back into the big pool of Atma. That sounds again very difficult to understand, but let's make it simple. When you study physics in school, and you study the subject of energy, what is the first rule that you learn about energy in school? Simple, basic science that you learn about energy. Energy cannot be created, cannot be destroyed. It is simply transferred from one type of energy to another type of energy. Right? The most basic that we learn in physics. And because somebody is standing there with a white lab coat, we believe it straight away. He's telling you about something called energy and you've never tasted energy, never seen energy. Chalo is tiki on it. And then he writes some equations on the board. I say, oh yeah, it's, that proves it. You know? Guruji says something, and it sounds all spiritual and fanciful. And it sounds make-believe. Puraniya galna, old things, these things have no relevance in this world today. Yeah? They sound like ancient wisdom. They don't sound like things that are relevant today. Remember, the meditators in the old days were the scientists. The ones doing the bhakti were the ones writing the science manuals. This is why we talk about the Hindu Granths. They are the ones, the meditators were the ones who were writing all these things. They didn't have telescopes. They didn't have fancy machines. They didn't have any technology. Yet they were sitting there counting the stars, telling you how many planets, how many solar systems there are. In the West, we believe Galileo was the first person to say that actually the Earth isn't the center of the universe. The Earth actually revolves around the sun a couple of hundred years ago. And because of that, because it challenged what the religious authority was saying at the time, they had him killed. That particular idea is called heliocentric theory. Helio means sun. 
being at the center. Galileo, we say he's the one who came up with it. Yet the Hindu Granths have had heliocentric theory for thousands of years. They've always been saying that the earth isn't the center. Things aren't revolving around the earth. In fact, the earth is moving and the sun is the center. Somebody says E equals MC squared. We don't know what it means. We think, yeah, it's fine. Yeah? But Bhagat Pibhaji says, what is in the universe is inside you and you can find it. You say, oh, I don't know what that means. Yeah? Something to think about. Just where do we... And this is not about where do we place our allegiances. It's not about, oh, we only got to, we only got to listen to these people or that people. It's not one is right or wrong. It's just about understanding that today science has got very good at marketing itself to the point at which the old gurus and the old masters seem outdated. But their wisdom is such, ad such, jugad such. It's the truth that's always true. Because they found the ultimate truth. The good thing about science is that science never holds on to any truth. Science says we're willing to be disproven. Today we believe this theory. Tomorrow, if you can prove something else, we'll throw the old one and we'll take the new one. Science is constantly evolving. Guru Nanak Dev Ji says we're not talking about things that can change. We're talking about such things that can't change, permanent. So when Guruji is talking here, saying that you can find something that death cannot touch, then we have to either believe it or we have to try it. But we can't dismiss it without trying. Yeah? When you find Atma and when you realize you are Atma, then what can death take from you? Death has nothing to take from you. The other meaning of Kaal is time. Time cannot reach you. That you become beyond time. Your body is limited to time. What is time? Time is relevant to your lifespan. Yeah? Your lifespan, you might live 60, 70, 80 years old, however much. We can live. And that's the length of time that we understand. And everything is in relation to that. One day is kimti, is valuable because you only have a fixed number of days within your lifespan. But when you find that which is beyond your body, which is beyond your life, which is ajuni, which is akal, then you found something that is beyond time as well. We talked about, if you remember going right back when we talked about Nirpa and Nirvair, those are reliant on time. You can only fear something in the future. Nirpa is to be present, beyond time. You can only hate something in the past. You can't hate something that hasn't happened yet. You can't fear something that happened yesterday, that's already happened. You can fear it happening tomorrow, but not yesterday. Nirpa Nirvair is about bringing times into a point where time doesn't affect you. Bringing your awareness now. Sunya pohe nasake kal. At this level, time and death cannot touch you. <laughs>